Hi everybody, welcome back to another cheapo multimeter review, and guess what? I got another cheapo multimeter, that's right, I've got an Anning M1, hot, fresh off the presses, waiting for you guys, so without further ado, let's take a look at Mr. Anning. Here we are with the box that the Anning ships in, and it is sort of a generic, no-name looking box, but at least you give you a box. Really irks me when you get these cheapy multimeters and they don't even send you a darn box. Ugh, I hate that. At least give me a box, you know? It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but at least with a box you're getting a modicum of protection. But anyway, that's a whole other story. So, yeah, we do get the box and we get these, uh, let's just call them crappy leads. And we do get a little user manual. Yeah, we get a user manual. Oh, I'm so happy. Now it's a generic manual. This is obviously geared to more towards other meters, not just the Enning, but um, it is what it is. Okay, what's with this meter? Well, it is a 2000 count. Apparently has an update of two to three for the display, uh, refresh time per second. And it does 100, 600 volts AC-DC and not a heck of a lot else. Um, yeah, it's basically your minimalistic kind of multimeter. If you're into resistance, I'm sorry, it only does two megs. Yeah, kind of sucks. Um, it does do up to 200 milliamps. It shares that uh, input jack along with the voltage. And it does claim a 10 amp as well. We will take a look on the inside. But um, let's start off with the test leads. Now, you know, you, you get these sort of, oh, I don't know what I'm going to call them just you know, really cheap leads every now and then that just feel like crap. These don't feel that bad, but they're not too far behind. So a little step above complete crap, but not total crap. Crap. Anyway, um, yeah, so they're very light. Feels like nothing, like I'm holding air. It has a Cat 3 1000 volt. Oh yeah. And they're really short, um, probably about two and a half feet, uh, maybe 45 centimeters or so. And the input jacks, you know, these cheesy little uh, banana style inputs. So, yeah, I will use them for the review, but definitely if you're gonna keep this meter, replace the leads. Now taking a look at the meter itself. What do you think guys? Kind of uh, not too bad looking. I think it's got some pretty decent looking lines there. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. it has a pretty linear look to it. It's uh, not completely rectangle, but um, yeah, fairly decent look. Not too shabby. Now, this is a cheap O multimeter, guys. I paid seven bucks Canadian for this around four fifty five dollars us you know it doesn't get much cheaper than that so you know is it any good or is it just complete shite and that's what i'm here to look at today because you know just because the multimeter is cheap doesn't mean it's shite that's right so we're gonna see just how useful it really is now if we put this up against another meter just to compare the size this is the rich meters you can see it's pretty close perhaps a half an inch a couple of centimeters longer but basically it's on par with the rich meters 403b take a look at the standing bale or the tilt stand it does not close so you know that's good it's it's uh plasticky but at least it does not flop around like my mother-in-law on a sunday morning at costco anyway that's a whole other story um not bad not bad at all it has that kind of plasticky feel to it. Buttons are plasticky as well. There's no rubber to speak of whatsoever on this meter. It is strictly plastic. Now take a look at that display. You know, that is not too shabby. I have to say the first time I turned this on, I was slightly depressed. I mean, I was impressed, not depressed. Um, yeah, so mm, it's, uh, it's not too bad. The font is quite crisp. And we have that little high voltage indicator right now, just because we're in the high voltage mode, but bring it down a notch and it disappears. But you know, generally speaking, there is um, not a bad 
display. Now this does have a backlight as well. And if we hit it, there you go, the backlight turns on. Now we'll slowly fade into oblivion in about 15, 20 seconds. But it is crisp. It is really a gorgeous looking backlight for a cheap old multimeter. This is probably one of the best looking backlights I've yet to see. Too bad it just didn't stay on as long as I wanted it to. There we go. And it is now, yeah, gone. But um, yeah, generally speaking, I'm quite happy with the display. I was not expecting something so, uh, so nice. Now let's talk about the rotary switch. If we look uh, inside, it's kind of got a neat little look to it. Um, they kind of took it up a notch. Remember, this is a cheap, cheap multimeter. Five bucks the American, seven Canadian. Now the switch is not the easiest thing in the world to, to turn. It's a little bit too recessed for my liking. You know, it's not ultra smooth, but it does hit the ranges with authority. It's not gonna get lost mid range. And it does have that nice clackety clack. So you definitely know it's changing. And, and this is a big hand. It doesn't beep. beep. Oh, I love it. Yeah. You know, when you're changing and beep, beep, oh my. Gosh, I don't know what they're thinking of half the time. No audible beeping when you turn that selector switch. So thank you, Anning, for giving us a little bit of sanity. Okay, I have it hooked up to the precision voltage reference. We should be looking at 250 millivolts. And guess what? We're looking at 250 millivolts. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Next up, we are in volts mode. We should be looking at 2.50 volts. And that's exactly what we see. 2.50 volts adding awesome two for two. You are an accurate little cheapy. I love it. We are currently in milliamp mode, sitting at 50 milliamps. And no worries there. Showing up is around 55. All right, so let's take it up a notch. Let's go up to 130 milliamps. Showing up as 134, 135. So far, so good. Let's take it up to, whoa, 200 milliamps, and we are over limit. Oh, it's so close. Take it down a notch, 180, 190. Yeah, they were good, we're good. And 200, and that's it, that's all she wrote. Okay, so, yeah, no worries there. We only have that lousy 200 milliamp. You see this on most cheap multimeters, even some not so cheap multimeters. It's just, yeah, a little on the low side for my liking. But hey, it got there no problem. Continuity is up next. We're gonna start off with the default test leads. Here we go. So obviously delay, it is a little laggy. Um, fairly audible. I mean, I've heard worse, so that's not so bad in terms of the actual sound level itself but it is slow slow and latched let's try another set of leads. okay pro masters it is why do i feel guilty about putting leads on a meter when the leads cost five times as much as the meter i don't know call me old-fashioned here we go so really no improvement at all still latched but still delayed so even with better leads, even with the best leads, it's still not very good. Okay, we're in diode mode. Let's see if it's any good at lighting up these little light emitting diodes. Here we go. And nothing for the green. Yellow is being lit. No forward voltage indicator though. Red is lit. And white is lit. And the blue is lit. Look back to the green. Oh, actually the green is lit so roger that we were able to illuminate every single led with this little cheapo we do not have a four voltage drop indicator but at least it lit them up hey good job anning if we take a look at the output diode voltage we can see the anning m1 is outputting a healthy 2.86 volts almost three volts in output diode mode good stuff taking a look on the inside of the anning m1 well interesting very interesting. Uh, let's take a closer look. Let's start off with 
back cover. And of course, no shielding. <laughs> that being said, nothing else to say. Now we'll start at the input jacks themselves. And if we take a look, we can see they are split, soldered directly into the PCB. Um, they are in housed in that plastic casing. So, you know, general wear and tear, this should be fine. I don't see any really long-term problem. Let's take a look at the input protection. That's where it gets a little bit interesting. What don't you see? Yeah, we don't see any fuses. We don't see any glass or ceramic style tube fuses. That's because Anning has done something a little bit different and I kind of like it. It's a cheap meter. And if you blow that 200 milliamp fuse, it'd be a real pain in the butt. And you can end up spending more on fuses in the long run than the damn meter. What they've done here, this is an SR250-200 and this is a poly switch resettable PTC on the milliamp range. So if you do overcurrent your low currents, no worries, you're okay. It'll go out of range, but it will self reset without blowing itself. I like that, I really do, especially on an inexpensive meter. Same thing with the current ho high current mode. They've incorporated a polymeric self resetting fuse and it's got that 10 amp rating and away you go. So, I mean, I don't know how much high current I would really be testing with this meter per se, but it should be capable of meeting that threshold. And you know what? No fuses to change, um, a lot less in the terms, uh, in the maintenance department. So I like it. I really like it, especially on an inexpensive, AKA cheapo multimeter, really good stuff. Um, we've got some dial clamping up here as well. We also have another PTC. There's the uh, piezo or speaker. And of course the IC is cobbed. Not a whole heck of a lot else going on. This is for the uh, HFE, uh, transistor testing on the other side. But a uh, big cap over here, a couple of transistors. We do have one uh, pot here, adjustable. But uh, yeah, really very small, tiny PCB. They put a lot on this little piece of board. But, um, you know, I, once again, coming back to that input protection, I like it. For this type of a meter, I think it works perfectly. Everything else looks pretty good. Nice, clean, clear PCB. No flux residue that I can see have released very, very little. And overall, in terms of fit and finish, yep, I like it. Okay, I'll come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anning M1 Cheapy Multimeter. Wow. You know what? When I got this meter, I wanted to not like it. Don't ask me why. I actually really wanted to hate it. In fact, I wanted to just, uh, you know, just, just, oh, I just didn't want to like it. But I like it. I actually like it. For five, seven bucks, I mean, you can't go wrong. It's accurate, has a really, really nice display, one of the best looking backlights I've ever seen on any cheapy multimeter, that's for sure. And it rivals some of the more expensive meters. And then you did a really good job. I wish you would have done a little bit more in the range department. I mean, two mega ohm just doesn't cut it this day and age, you know, it's just not enough. But that being said, in terms of the input protection, I like what they've done. I like the fact that they've replaced your typical glass fuse with something a little more out of the box, something a little less maintenance, and it's still gonna work just fine. When I was playing on the milliamp mode, I went as high as 500 milliamps, brought it back down, and it reset itself almost instantly. If this would have been a regular fused meter, I would have had to replace it, no questions asked. So in the long run, I think this is really good value for the buck, a lot better than your typical 830 clone. I like it. I'm gonna give the Anning M1 a solid four out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this cheap old meter review. Don't forget we got that live chat coming up Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock GMT. I hope everybody can be there. There's gonna be Jerry. He's gonna be our Unity rep. He's got lots of good stuff to tell us all. We've got a giveaway, a multimeter giveaway, thanks to uh, Mr. Tools. And it's just gonna be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. This coming Sunday, April 7th, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next time, keep on testing.